the Center for Science and Democracy at the Union of Concerned Scientists is focused on science as an important input to societal choice, not the determinant of societal choices. Society and all of you make choices about you, what you think we ought to do. We believe that you should have scientific evidence in front of you, available to you, understandable, in an understandable form, but we realize that there's many other considerations that come into those choices. We established our Center for Science and Democracy to build on our legacy with a compelling vision, basically to strengthen American democracy by advancing the essential role of science, evidence-based knowledge, and constructive debate in the U.S. policymaking process. At UCS, we think that better information and stronger regulations are needed to understand and reduce the potential environmental and public health risks associated with this extraction. Fracturing was developed in the late 1940s, and we've been drilling for oil and gas for well over a century. But it's the scale and scope of fracking that have changed dramatically in recent years, causing an industrial and economic boom in some localized areas, much cheaper natural gas, and the potential to be more self-sufficient in energy. In fact, better fracking technologies and drilling techniques have actually changed the energy economy of the United States, driving natural gas prices down some 70% since their peak in 2008. Here in California, we're standing on the threshold, at least potentially, of a modern day energy rush, thanks to the fact that technology now makes it possible, at least in theory, to access what may be the largest deep shale oil reserve in the world in the Monterey Shale Formation that underlies a huge swath of California, including here in Los Angeles. Estimates are that we may be sitting on top of 15 billion barrels of oil. But alongside the industrial and potential economic benefits this resource might provide, people have a fundamental question. Is this safe? We have brought together dozens of experts in science, law and policy, public health, and community engagement to answer three basic questions. One. What do we know about fracking? What is the state of the science? Two, how should we go about regulating? What should local, state, and federal officials be expected to know and to do? And three, what do communities need to know to have meaningful engagement in this debate? This is a question that really illustrates the power for collaboration between academic and citizens organizations such as we've seen today. It's a question where there's real and hard scientific uncertainties and questions and research needs, but also such high stakes that these questions are often obscured by confusion, by conflicting understandings and misunderstandings, and occasionally by intentional misrepresentations. Citizens need to be engaged and informed about the decisions and about the risks to them and their communities. Public health and environmental safety should trump trade secrets and non-disclosure. Disclosure is necessary, but not in itself sufficient. Disclosure is the foundation of the discussion about the pros and cons and the if and how of the fracking debate. Beyond that, it's critical to engage and empower residents and communities and voters in the decision-making process. The use of hydraulic fracturing has expanded without adequate federal oversight, and public concern has grown. Strong regulation, full transparency, and rigorous science are essential to ensuring that oil and gas drilling occurs safely and responsibly. So before we even talk about what new rules we need to fill the gaps, there are existing rules on the books that whether through capacity or lack of will are not being enforced. We need to figure out how to address those. We talked about a need of baseline testing, whether it's water quality, air quality, baseline health studies in communities, and then we need to have ongoing monitoring to evaluate as this activity is underway and moves forward, are there changes that we are seeing? And hopefully we're seeing improvement as we go along, but if not, that jumps us over to that accountability bucket. What do we do about it? We need to have a rapid response and an ability to change path to make sure that this is continually improving as we go along. We, the public, demand from the corporate sector that they respond to our concerns. That if they have a culture in their company that doesn't promote safety, that they reanalyze whether they can stay in business profitably with that culture. That they make a commitment to the public 
that they care about what happens to the public, whether they're people of little means or a lot of means. The way the question was framed, and this, this um, captures points that a lot of people raised, um, we want to know what is happening. We want to participate in data collection and have our concerns heard. What do we do? In large part, this data needs to come from industry, from the producers themselves. Uh, but data collection should also involve the communities, which can in fact help to design the sort of studies and data collection that is needed, as well as universities, government, state and federal agencies. We need more information about how much water is being used, where it's being sourced, and really more dialogue with local communities about um, how much water they really need to take. You know, really get guidance on, on a whole host of contaminants, including dissolved gases um, and, and heavy metals and so forth. Uh, and make sure that the monitoring doesn't just stop beyond the baseline pre-drilling, that it's taking place after drilling and also five years after the site is reclaimed as well. You should keep monitoring those sites. What do we really know about these exposures? We know that, as Monica mentioned, some in the in the water and air, there's releases of ozone, there's uh, benzene, there's silica, um, there's, a, there, there's con uh, diesel fumes also continue to be released. We have, we have issues that are not well understood. You do not want to wait until a well is contaminated. You want to be able to characterize your groundwater basins. We need to know what it is ahead of the curve and then we need to test just as was suggested. If you don't have the evidence in front of you, it's pretty hard to imagine you're going to make a good decision. But lack of evidence doesn't mean something is safe. If you don't know, that doesn't mean that it's safe. Phase out toxics, act on early warnings, give public and workers the right to know and participate in the process, comprehensive allow access to comprehensive safety data and pr protect communities and workers. If you're at the point of extraction or you're at the point of, ex of production or you're at the point of transportation, it's still affecting these communities. It doesn't just happen with water. It doesn't just happen with air. It happens by being run over by trucks by having to idle, having trucks idle in communities. So there's a lot more impact than we've talked about in this, in this debate. Policymakers, the public, industry, um, organizations uh, that are uh, out to protect the, uh, the public welfare, public and private, all of us need to be on the same page, meaning we make informed decisions based on the merits. But what you need to do is convince them that your position is the merit-based position. And how do you do that? You need facts. You need information. You need to be able to present your case. Whether it was 25 years ago, today, or 25 years from now, we need to have open, transparent government. If we're going to have good government, it's got to be open.